No matter who you are or what circumstances you're in, sometimes we get lonely and loneliness can lead to depression. However, in certain circumstances, our loneliness and our challenges can help us draw closer to Christ. In today's message, you're going to hear how that happened for one individual. And hopefully this can help you as well as you're battling your loneliness or going through your tough times. Hey everyone, welcome to Changing. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, and I'm excited to talk to you today. And my guest is Mr. Godfrey McAllister. Godfrey is a friend of mine in the professional speaking world and also just a good individual. I know Godfrey has a testimony of our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. And, and on, this, on this episode today, we get a chance to talk about one of his experiences, which I feel applies to so many of us. In Godfrey's example, you get a chance to hear about how he was battling loneliness and how he always had a relationship with God. But as he went through his loneliness, how that was able to help him draw closer to Christ. In Godfrey's Godfrey's situation, he drew closer to our Father in heaven. And in your circumstance, maybe you're in a good situation right now. Perhaps you don't have many challenges. However, we don't have to wait for difficult moments to draw closer to Christ. I want you to listen to what Godfrey has to share on that. If this is your first time listening or watching one of our videos, I ask you to go ahead and hit subscribe as well as share this with friends or other people you might know who may not necessarily have a testimony of our Father in Heaven or of Jesus Christ. Join us as we join Godfrey and hear his story of how he drew closer to our Savior Jesus Christ and our Father in Heaven. Godfrey, welcome to the show. Thank you, Donald. Thank you very much. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. We, on this podcast, we talk to individuals like yourself who are growing in their testimonies of Jesus Christ, and we're all continually changing. Um, I'm excited to hear your story today, because I think yours especially is timely for many of us who are still battling um, some of the loneliness that we feel that came through this time period. But before we dive into that, why don't you talk to us a little bit more about what you do, Godfrey? Um, I'm sure you just, you're, you're not just sitting on camera all day, every day. Um, You you have some kind of other business you do. (laughs) (laughs) Speak it into being, brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am, look here, I work with people. I work with people. I am seven years into my sojourn into this land called America. And essentially, my practice as a financial consultant is pretty much what I rely on in terms of paying the bills. What I really enjoy doing is not that. What I enjoy doing is sharing with people, ministering to people. Today I met two persons, who cares where, had a chance to minister to them, and out of that I'm going to be writing a blog because some very interesting tidbits came out. So yes, that's what I do. I'm a motivational consultant, and so I share wherever I can. Some people call me a resolution specialist. (laughs) In other words, you got a problem, by the grace of God, I'll help you solve it. (laughs) You know, I like that. (laughs) The resolution specialist, like you, you, you help to alleviate the challenges that we come across. And and, uh, yes, because, you know, challenges are easy. Solutions are abundant, but not always readily identifiable. No. And uh, by the grace of God. Yeah, you're 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 true on that one. It's it's, it's not really. Sometimes we need the guidance, and I, I, there's something about counseling together, like having a sounding board of people that you can go to, and um, and and oftentimes, like you said, it's the you know ministering. Like if I can go and listen and talk to and help a fellow sister or brother. I can help them solve a problem by just counseling and uh, where two or three gathered, you know, that's where the spirit will be. The Lord will be there. So I think there's a, there's a lot to that. So appreciate that. That's cool. And uh, we're going to link back to your LinkedIn profile and some of your information so people can get connected to you, whether it is to connect and to minister, or maybe perhaps there is opportunity there for, um, you know, to, to partner with you for events or, or whatnot. So it's pretty neat. So, Godfrey, let's let's go into this. Let's start talking about this. Back two years ago, something amazing happened. Um, well, let's go further back. Your your journey to the United States. Um, what what brought you to the United States? And you said seven years ago. Let's go back to to that point. 
Well, it's probably who brought me? My daughter. <laughs> okay, fine. So, um, 30 years ago, I began speaking professionally in the motivational realm. Mm-hmm. But I've never made it a business. And I've spoken in about 12 countries, especially when I was in my heyday in the insurance business. I was yeah. in very, very great demand especially to speak on that topic. Sharing my experiences, sharing what God has downloaded into me has always and will always be my passion. What I didn't understand is that in America, skill, ability, gifting, and talent is about 10% Mm. of the prerequisite for motivational speaking. (laughs) 90% is the business part of it which Mm -hmm. I must confess, I never paid attention to. Mm -hmm. So to this date, I am giving it a little bit more thought thought now. But basically, I came here to launch my professional speaking career, not knowing that there was a major business component to it and not just using the gifts that God has given me. So because of that, I have not yet broken into that field. Now, I guess I made amends during my Toastmasters journey because I've been a Toastmaster for 21 years now. And once I came to America, I found that I was able to continue my Mm -hmm. Toastmasters journey. And that became an outlet for my motivational speaking desires, abilities, etc. So I've been doing a lot of work in Toastmasters International. But of course, as you know, that ain't no business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that gives you, a, a leads you into another uh, a challenge here. That, that's another conversation that we can have for another day there. That's a long one yes. there too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you found yourself here in the United States. You're trying to develop this business side. You're trying to do more speaking. Um, then COVID happened. Um, it wasn't, you, you weren't being successful with that, but you told me something interesting in our conversation um, the other day. COVID happened and what, as a natural byproduct of that, we were all isolated. Everyone was locked away um, in, their, in their homes and so forth. Uh, talk to me about that for you. Okay, now, unfortunately, my story is not typical Mm -hmm. because I've said with a great amount of empathy, I've said to many people what uh, the the isolation and the social distancing that you're experiencing uh, and the quarantining, I had that self-imposed seven years ago when I came to America. So I have been living here alone since I've come to America. I never lived alone in my life. And that, for me, was the entry into a phase of loneliness, Mm. something that I knew nothing about. Back in Jamaica, I've always been surrounded by family, friends, enemies, (laughs) frenemies, you know, but always been surrounded. When I came here, I literally was alone with God. And so that, that became my journey into loneliness. And in that journey of loneliness, I drew closer to God. And that's not a big spiritual achievement. Hmm. It's almost a duh. I mean, well, you ain't got nobody else to talk to. Well, (laughs) come on. (laughs) You know, it's not really that much of a lift to recognize that you better make use of the person that is always with you and that has never left you. Yeah. And so I thank God for that period of self-imposed loneliness. It certainly drew me closer to God. It also helped me to understand the meaning of depression. Hmm. Talk to me about that. Go further into that. What do you mean it helped you understand that, the meaning of depression? Well, very simply put, depression is something that literally everybody struggles with at some point or the other. Mm-hmm. Life, is like a, life is like a roller coaster. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. But guess what? It's the ups that take you down. And it's the downs that take you up. And so there's always depression. 
Acute depression is usually what people refer to as depression. Yeah. And when people don't know how to handle depression, that is when they become more depressed. As I like to say, the depression becomes compressed. And that's where the, the challenge lies. What I realized is that we are gregarious creatures. God made us for a relationship. Mm-hmm. And when you have something to share, and I'm not referring to public speaking now, when you have something to share and there's no one with whom to share it, yeah. when you have a joy and there's no one to share that joy with, or a sadness and there's no one to share it with, trust me, that's the beginning of depression. You know, you and I, you are always the bigger man, but you know, we have won some contests in the Toastmasters world and so on. Uh, and probably more than our fair share. And I remember distinctly, very often, you go to a contest in Boca Raton or wherever it is, you know, and you come out and you win both or you're the top person, uh, unless, of course, Donald Kelly was competing. But, but, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you come out and you have the big trophies and I stop at Costco and I buy a hot dog and a soda and I drink and that's my reward. And I come home with the trophy to an empty house. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Don't try it. <laughs> yeah. That's an entry into depression. And so I learned to handle depression. And what I learned, what God taught me, is that since depression is inevitable, we need to understand it. And one of the things that I teach people is this when you find yourself Entering into depression, don't fight it. It's like when you're driving and you get into a skid. Yeah. Don't fight it. Go with it, and that's another lecture for another time. But when <laughs> you find yourself entering into depression, don't fight it. So what I do is this. Now, you will see, you know, my face has never been a handsome face. And it's, and I don't know that age is going to make it even... Oh, age whatever, is not, man. It <laughs> is not the solution. But what I do is that when I'm feeling depressed, I start to cry. Mm. And I look at my face in the mirror. And when I look at my face in the mirror, trust you, trust me, it makes me more depressed. Mm. And what happens is that I accelerate the rate of depression. And I hit the bottom faster than I normally would have. So in in other words, instead of taking a slow descent into depression over a period of two days, I take a rapid descent, an accelerated descent into depression in a matter of hours. I hit the bottom. And guess what? Once you hit the bottom, ain't nowhere to go except what? The bumps back up. Yeah. And so I found that to be a very practical, simple, but very practical way to teach persons uh, a little secret. In dealing with depression, of course, I am minimizing. I'm, I'm taking a very big subject, and I'm just giving you one <laughs> aspect of it. But that is something that God uh, has made it possible for me to learn from practical experience. How did you start to overcome? What, what, how did you intrude, like start going to the Lord to get help with this once you recognize it? Or, or just talk to me about that. Like, was there a time where you say, said, I need God more? And I need to talk to him. And what was that conversation like in your head? And, and what was that first approach like to you know, start talking to God to get you through this time? Well, first of all, I, I never had to start talking to God because God never left me. Mm. And it, I, mean, I mean, God lives within me. He lives within every child of God. The Holy Spirit resides within all, all of us. It was a very natural progression. As I said before, if you... If you're accustomed to talking to Tom, Dick, Harry, and God, hi, Tom, no answer. Hi, Dick, no answer. Hi, Harry, no answer. Hi, God, yes, my son. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't take long for you to figure out that he's there and yeah. nobody else is. So it's really not a big deal. It's, uh, for me, it was... Uh, it was nothing dramatic. It just happened. It seemed to be a natural sequential flow of cir- circumstances. Mm. But, what, but what I will say, though, is that it rapidly grew into a very intimate relationship. Yeah. But then again, th- again, that's nothing new again. The Pavlovian theory. You know, if you give a dog uh, food and, and he comes back and he comes back and he, eventually you hook him in no time. 
Well, God hooked me. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Did you, even though he, you, you were, you had the relationship with him, you know, talk to me about getting closer to him during this, this loneliness period. Like, like how did you see a relationship strengthen? And if so, how did it strengthen during that time period? Okay, dependency. You know, men are taught, well, people are taught to be independent, and men yeah. even more so. And uh, the, 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 the paradox in the Christian faith is that you grow up in a culture where you're rightly taught to be independent, and then you become a Christian, and you're told that a deeper walk with Christ results, uh, requires you, rather, to become dependent. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and so that, that little thing there creates a little uh, tension in the mind. But once you understand and once you appreciate the fact that dependency on God is a requirement, then you depend on Him. And the dependency syndrome is something that kicks in very easily. We all heard of, of something called addiction. What yeah. is addiction? Addiction to drugs, addiction to sex, addiction to money, addiction to God. Ain't no different. It's really the same thing. You, you take a little bit and it tastes good and you come back for more and you come back for more and you come back for more and you make you feel nice and you feel nicer and nicer and you come back for more and imagine how unlike drugs when you come back for more the price does not go up <laughs> so you come back for more and yes he's there you want more and you get greedy now you want more and he's there more and you can't done him done him finish him <laughs> you, you can't exhaust his resources. Yeah. And so, I'm sorry, it's not rocket science. All of us want good. Yeah. All of us want the best for ourselves. And when you begin to tap into something that is good, and the resources is endless, you can get it anytime you want it. More yeah. than noon and night, regardless of the circumstance. You can afford the price because it is free. <laughs> Come on. Addiction becomes very easy. Yeah. And you become addicted. Mm. And that's what addiction is. You can't get off because you're now addicted. So in that time period, you, you, you became more addicted to God because of your constant communication with him, this since he was talking back to you even more so, so to speak, you were talking more so to him than usual because you were alone with him. You didn't have any other distraction like you know, traveling for work or anything else or the family or the frenemies that you had in Jamaica. This was just you in isolation with your maker, with your father yes. in heaven. And that was able to improve. Let's talk let about me just emphasize. Sure. May I just emphasize one, one thing, thing, though? Yeah, please. It's not just chatting hi how are you you know yeah you made the moon no it's problems mm. it's problems what do you mean problems? the word of god says in the day of trouble call upon me i will answer you and you will glorify me and trust me we're not short of problems all sorts no. of problems and i i mean all sorts of problems yeah little problems big problems and each time i can't find my whatever it is and he shows me where it is. Come on, there are millions of them every day, but they're all problems, all challenges. He helps me to overcome it. So it's a very practical relationship in which I get the help, he gets the praise, and he loves the praise. He <laughs> loves the glory. He loves the worship because that's what he is. Yeah. He thrives on that, and he says it. And I love the help. <laughs> what advice do you have to someone who they may not be in a extreme loneliness, or perhaps they are in loneliness, because we, we, you know, maybe... I, I think the synopsis that I'm getting from this is if you're if you find yourself that you're lonely, you need to turn to God because he's always going to be there no matter what. When everybody else is gone, God is always there and you need to go back to him. But let's talk about somebody who may not necessarily they're, they're listening to this podcast. They're not lonely per se right now. They have their family around them. They have their friends. They have work. They have all these other things and they're distracted and they're, they don't have that close relationship to God. How can they hone in um, shy of finding himself by themselves lonely, what can they do to make sure that they foster that relationship right now in a, when times are good on the, on the high, so to speak? Okay. My advice would be get smart. Look, <laughs> the Christian life is not just about God. 
it's also about the devil. Okay? It's about God, it's about the devil. There's a choice. There's a battle that is being waged every day. The Bible says, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. We need to understand that the, the tricks and the wiles of the devil are designed to turn us into idiots. That's what it is designed to do. It's designed to deceive us. And we need to understand that, you know, the friends that we have and the family that we have, just think of it. COVID is a, has been a very, very good instructor, a vicious one. Mm -hmm. But the friends and the family we have, they are really vulnerable, very vulnerable. They can lose their job. They can lose their life. They can lose this. They can lose that. They can lose interest in us. Yeah. And so cultivate your human relationships, but understand that there's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Understand that when all forsake, and even if you feel that all will not forsake you, look around. Don't get too conceited. Look around, and you will see no ends of people who have been abandoned by their family, by their friends. And so, while things are good, give God thanks. You know, the relationship with God is not just, I'm in problems, I want to ask him to help me. Yeah. It really begins with thanking him for what he's already done. And so if we get into the habit, regardless of how good things appear to be, if we get into the habit of giving God the glory, giving God thanks, okay, fine, so things are good. Thank you, Lord. My family is around me. Thank you, Lord. I've got a good job. Thank you, Lord. Because all good gifts come from above. Mm. And that's not difficult. You know, there's no rocket science here, Donald. It's not <laughs> difficult, you know. I am brilliant. No, I don't mean me. <laughs> Somebody is saying, I am brilliant. You know, I've got a, I, I, I can do this. I can do that. And then a little bug bites you. You can't even see the bug. Call it the flu, you know? Yeah. And you're sick in bed. You can't work. Duh. Yeah. How powerful are we really? <laughs> you know what I mean? All good gifts come from God. And it's a good habit, while things are going good, to give him thanks. You know, when Paul yeah. and Silas was in prison, they didn't start to learn to praise God in prison. When you have 39 lashes on your back and you're in a muddy prison with iron on your feet and on your hands, that's not the time to learn to praise God. <laughs> you you better have that. been in the habit before that. <laughs> and certainly they were in the habit before that. And of course they give praise to God. And so, so that would be my long answer to your short question. When things are going good, realize the source of the goodness. Yeah. When you're on top of the world, realize who is maintaining you on top of the world. That person is God. That person is Jesus. Give him praise. Not only will that help to keep you there, but when you fall, as fall you will, Yeah. the journey down, you will not be alone yeah. because he will be with you. Oh. Godfrey, powerful stuff there. Um, if somebody is we kind of hit that but if somebody's out there and they are they're finding right now that they they want to make that change they have not had that close relationship with god because they didn't they chose not to reach out to him but now they're trying to change their life and they want to make that change and uh what advice would you give to them today like right now donald there are two sets of people mm -hmm. only two those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. We call them, they're born again. Different churches use different terminology. We're not getting into sure. that now. But they are saved. They are born again. They are on their way to heaven. They, are, they have now become sons of God and joint heirs with Christ. That's one type of person. Yeah. The other type of person is everybody else. Because we are all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So if you have not transitioned into sonship with God, you're a son of the devil. Good. That's settled. Now, the formula is not the same for both. So if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, hello, what you're waiting on? <laughs> what you're <laughs> waiting up. on? Get smart. Get smart. Get smart. Give your life to Christ. Enter the family. He paid the price for your sins on the cross of Calvary. All you've got to do is to accept he's waiting for you. Now, once you become a child of God, that's where now the, the journey really begins. And so for the benefit of the listeners, ask the question again, and I'll now address those who know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. 
they know him they in a situation where they want to draw closer to him what advice they are giving them today my advice is just ask god for forgiveness mm. that we have been not so smart <laughs> okay and the good thing is that the forgiveness is guaranteed yeah there are two things that there are three things that is required for every christian to grow one you got to be in the word you got to study god's word that's how he speaks to us two you have to be in prayer and i like to emphasize prayer please don't forget the prayers component of prayer and three you got to exercise you got to flap your wings exercise your muscles by sharing the love of jesus with others these are the three things that he requires and what i would say is one begin with asking god for for forgiveness two start to study god's word there um, get into bible study bible reading is great it's good bible study is even better and then ask god for the boldness to share his message his love with others might be a little bit you know if he at first that's okay ask him for the help but what i would find to be probably one of the greatest catalysts is just to take a look at the cross just to take a look at the cross watch the passion if you have the guts i don't have the guts i i, I can't handle it i know the story i i can't handle it but just just watch the passion read the gospels understand what jesus christ did for me for you and when we focus on that I believe out of that will come a number of emotions and a number of mental intellectual reactions that will draw us closer to God because when I understand what he has done for me it's difficult for me not to say Lord what do you expect of me and once we say that <laughs> when he has the answer a long time ago he just wants us to be closer to him and being closer to him is not a there's not a magic formula but as i said study god's word pray talk with him give him thanks i now consider myself to be a prayer specialist I, 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 and this is a it's not a boast it's a testimony yeah because i have worked on it I, I, and i worked in it a couple of years two years ago when i was when i was involved in a motor vehicle accident five ribs broken my kneecap broken my sh my dis shoulder was dislocated my tongue cut almost in half yes my tongue me a wow. speaker my tongue cut almost in half they said they had to have surgery and i was battered and bruised all over and when i came to consciousness on the road looking up all i could see was the light and i'm not talking about that tunnel now all i can see was the light it was dusk and my first words i couldn't speak because my mouth was full of blood i couldn't speak audibly but what i said was thank you lord to god be the glory huh huh well all i'm gonna say to you paul and silas is a better example okay <laughs> but you don't learn to praise god under those conditions so i would say get a custom giving thanks you know we teach our children to yeah. say thanks um somebody tells me that donald ha is a father now uh, and <laughs> and Donald is going to be teaching his is it a boy or girl son yeah no Donald is going to be teaching his son like we all teach our children to say thank you but as Christians we need to go beyond saying thank you we've got to be learned to be thankful mm. to be grateful and I don't think anything will draw you closer to God than that because that excites God worship yeah. excites god praise excites god and when god gets excited he, he does all kind of foolishness like throw blessings all about the place <laughs> 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 well god free man this has been great to hear your story of how you've been drawn closer to god and how you're changing um because we're all continually changing we appreciate that if folks out there want to get in touch with you and to learn from you how did it go about connecting with you well my Website is godfreymcallister.com. That's one one of them. Probably the easiest way to contact me is WhatsApp. I mean, that's what everybody is doing now. 954-299-9394. That's 
0244-299-9394. That's the easiest way. And then for more detailed stuff, of course, we have the email address, but we can leave that for now. Well, we'll put that in our show notes so folks can get access to it and, and to get connected to you. Godfrey, I appreciate your time coming on the show today. Appreciate you sharing your story. May God continue to bless you. Thank you, Donald. Thanks for having me. Anytime. That is Godfrey McAllister. And if you want to connect with him, go ahead and find him on WhatsApp, as well as you can check out his website. We have information in our show notes, and I would just encourage you to connect with him. He's a very intelligent individual, brings a lot of wisdom to the table, and uh, a phenomenal speaker as well. So if your organization is looking for somebody, you can uh, go ahead and tell them you know of a guy and uh, recommend Godfrey McAllister. Listen, I'm so grateful to be able to be here with you today. I'm so grateful to be able to have you to, to, to share and to grow with. We are all continuing to change. We're all learning. We're all, we're all trying to become the better version of who God wants us to be. And sometimes we might need help. If you need prayer, need some guidance, or need help to get on that path, feel free to reach out to me. You can feel, connect with me, Donald C. Kelly, 09 at gmail.com. That's my personal Gmail. Against, again, that's Donald C. Kelly, 09 at gmail.com. So excited, and I'm so looking forward to the opportunity to be in the be in that place when God comes again, and Jesus is reigning. That we are both on His right hand side. That you're right there, and that I'm right there. And because because we are changing, we have changed, and we have become the individual that He wants us to be. Love you, and may God continue to bless you. I testify to you that Jesus lives. I testify to you as a Christ, and I know, I know that one day He will come again. And let's prepare for that. And I share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.